Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. Now, obviously, today's talk is purely for academic interest. Never take any medicines or stop take any, any medicines that your doctor has prescribed based on what you hear here. But the first clip is with a Mr. Joe Rogan, and it features Dr. Mark Gordon. Let's listen to that clip now. I think you'll find it interesting. You shouldn't talk about that publicly. No, I should the not. Ivermectin. Yeah, ivermectin. Horrible shits. So really, you can talk about it now. Oh, good. Now, uh, you know, fucking people are taking it. Yeah. I, I think I sent you the ivermectin paper with ivermectin from Bendazol. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a 76-year-old veteran who was diagnosed with a Gleason 7. You know, Gleason is a grade of cancer of the prostate. And it was a Gleason 7. He went on 12 milligrams of ivermectin every day for eight weeks and at 12 weeks he got a pet scan done a special pet scan done looking at um abnormalities in the prostate they couldn't find anything that's amazing and his psa prostatic specific antigen when he came when his initial one with the cancer was 12.6 uh, he's now at 5.3 well there you go now um the second clip is again from mr joe rogan with uh, in conversation with a mr mel Gibson, let's listen to what happened to three of Mr. Gibson's friends. I'll tell you a good story. Okay. I have three friends. All three of them had stage four cancer. All three of them don't have cancer right now at all. And they had some serious stuff going on. And what did they take? Do, oh, Jesus. They took some, what you've heard they've taken. Ivermectin, fenbendazole. fenbendazole. Yeah, that's yeah. Tough. I'm hearing that a lot. They there's, drank hydrochloride, something or other. There's studies on that there's, now where people have proven that people they've are drinking methylene yeah. blue and stuff. Like yeah, methylene blue, which was a fabric dye. Yeah, yeah, it was a textile dye, and now they find it has profound effects on your mitochondria. Yep. Yeah, this stuff works, man. And there's a lot of stuff that does work, which is very strange mm -hmm. because. Again, it's profit. When you when you hear about things that are demonized and that, are, that turn out to be effective, you always wonder, well, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. How is how is our medical institutions? How have they failed us so that things that do cure you are not promoted because they're not profitable? Well, it's clearly true to say there's a lot of interest, and increasing interest on repurposed drugs. Drugs are often out of patent, remarkably inexpensive, with potential wider therapeutic applications than their original uh, indications. Now, the problem is there's a real lack of trial data on this. And we, we, we know this is true because clinical trials are expensive and people aren't going to spend a lot of money on trials. But I believe that President Trump is going to reintroduce right to try. So people with diseases like cancer or terminal diseases will have a right to try a new drug uh, or a repurposed drug. And this means that they should be available on prescription fairly soon in the United States. And this means we can collect very detailed, ongoing, longitudinal, prospective data to allow us to adjudicate definitively on efficacy, even without potentially a randomised double-blind controlled trial. Now, I do know a few people that might be working in the new administration uh, under Mr. Kennedy, we hope, and uh, I am making some suggestions for research ideas to them. Uh, one is the potential for repurposed drugs to have a properly funded clinical trial, a trial that's not funded by Big Pharma. And that would yield absolutely fascinating results, but we don't know if that's going to happen. But there's other ways we can collect data. 